as to whether or not this is a lesson plan in which you, as the people of the state of Ohio, should be proud. What is at stake in this? And quite frankly, this is where I want to close. I think what is at stake literally is everything. Um, this is a cartoon, last panel of a cartoon, that a friend of mine sent me. And you can see there's a young man here. I assume he's a Hindu or Pakistani. He's in a science laboratory studying science. And you can see this as the creationist found unlikely support among students in China and India. And this young man is saying, oh, yes, America, we would like it very much if you would teach your students, your children, religious dogma instead of science. We'd like their jobs. And I think uh, to, to pull absolutely no punches, what is at stake in this argument, in this debate, in this political struggle, isn't whether students will learn evolution. I think that's small potatoes. Um, I don't think a generation of citizens will be harmed if they don't quite understand the difference between allopatric and sympatric speciation. I think what is, what is difficult is to contemplate an America, a generation of Americans growing up with a wedge driven between them and science. And the intelligent design movement proposes to drive exactly that wedge, which is aimed to produce what they call a theistic science. If that happens, then something that all of us in this room have taken for granted during our lifetimes is going to change. And that's something is that the United States is the worldwide leader in scientific research and technology. If we put that mantle down, and I think this movement has the potential to cause that to actually happen, a dozen nations around this world will eagerly pick it up, will take scientific leadership from us, and will never give it back. And that is what is at stake in Ohio and every one of the American states. Thank you very much for coming today. Professor Miller, very much for his talk. Uh, he is open to questions. How much time, roughly? Uh, okay. Uh, fine. Uh, okay, we'll figure that's probably a reasonable time. Uh, uh, I'm going to moderate this, which means simply that I will point to people to stand up and ask questions. Uh, and uh, Patricia has suggested that I might contribute any comments that uh, I would find helpful, but I will try to be very restrained in doing that. Uh, so who has questions? Yes. Um, Dr. Miller, how do you explain these, quote, legitimate scientists supporting this? I am embarrassed to confess that Dr. Behe is a biophysicist. I am as well. And I was shocked to see that he was doing this. I've known him for many years. How do we get into this? And what's going on? And what's their agenda? Well, I, I'm not going to pretend for a minute to be able to psychoanalyze um, the people who stand on the other side of this debate. Um, but I will point out that almost to a person, they regard evolution as the foundation of a dangerous scientific materialism. And I'm going to point to somebody who I think really summed up the reason for the opposition best. And, and I think this reason applies even to a trained scientist like Michael Behe or Jonathan Wells, who has two PhDs, or Stephen Meyer, who's trained in philosophy. Um, this summer in August, I was listening to an interview on National Public Radio. And it was an interview with Senator Rick Santorum from Pennsylvania, who's just published a new book called It Takes a Family. And in there, it was like a 10-minute interview, and it was just to let him you know, promote his book and say what it was about. But in the middle of it, the interviewer asked him, you know, Senator Santorum, I found it strange that in the middle of your book, you took a shot at part of the science curriculum. Now, you're a senator, a politician, with no training in science. But nonetheless, you decided to take a shot at evolution. And then he said, why evolution? And it's almost an exact quote uh, that I almost have it memorized. And Senator Santorum says, because it really matters. It's where we come from. And he said, if we're just an accident, if we're a mistake of nature, then that puts a different moral demand on us. And he thought for a second and said, in fact, it doesn't put a moral demand on us. Then if we are the intentional creation of a supreme being 
who does make moral demands. Now think about that. Because what he said is that if evolution is right, morality is an illusion. And morality isn't just don't do sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Morality is what's right in the world. How do you treat the poor? Issues of war and peace, economic justice, fairness, personal integrity. Morality matters, and I think it matters to all of us. It certainly matters to me. If you actually come to believe that evolution as a doctrine invalidates any sense of morality, you're going to oppose it whether you think it's scientifically justified or not. Now, I'm not going to pretend to look inside Dr. Behe's head and see if that's exactly what is making him tick. But I do know he has said very clearly that he thinks evolution and evolutionary materialism is a morally destructive doctrine. And I would assume that's the source of the motivation. Next question. Got one up on the balcony. Okay, up there. It's in loud. You'll have to talk loudly. Sure. Um, these folks uh, wouldn't participate through the political process instead of the scientific process unless that's where the fertile ground was. I, I spent a lot of time on the political left and noticed that hostility towards science is just as great there. The New Age stuff you were talking about, astrology, etc. You betcha. So yeah. What is it that we ought to be doing better? Well, I, I, that's a really good question. And I also, um, as, as an ex Barry Goldwater Republican, um, I appreciate you saying that large elements of the left are anti-science. And it certainly is true. And you see this, for example, I think you see this most clearly in the European left, uh, where the European left has been enormously hostile to science and technology. I think, and, uh, and I'll accuse myself first, I think that we in science suck at getting our message across to the public. We are terrible popularizers. And as an example of that, I would ask how many people in the audience were aware of the discovery regarding the fusion of human chromosome number two, which was worked out about 18 months ago. I, yeah, exactly. A couple well-informed biologists. But aside, but aside from that, um, that should have been popularized. That should have been on the evening news, and there should have been sort of the Carl Sagan types writing about it and talking about it. And part of it is because, quite frankly, we in science, we have the best jobs in the world. I mean, how cool it is to be able to walk in your laboratory in the morning and say, gee, I wonder what I shall try to discover today. And, and you know what? That's the job that I have and a lot of other people in this room have, too. And that's cool. Um, so why would you want to get messed up in the political process if that was it? Um, so that's one reason is self-absorption. Another reason, I think, is a terrible and ultimately self-destructive tendency in the scientific community to look down our noses at popularizers. Example, Carl Sagan, who I think was the most effective popularizer of science in the last 30 or 40 years, in many circles was looked down upon by his colleagues in the astronomical and physical science community. Stephen Jay Gould, the great evolutionary biologist, this may come as news to some of you who don't, don't know this field very tightly, but Steve was actually looked down upon by many people who regarded themselves as more serious evolutionary scientists precisely because Steve wrote for the general public and did that brilliantly. Until we in the scientific community, A, do a better job of popularizing science, and B, begin to reward our best messengers to the public sphere, um, I think science is going to take heat from both the left and the right. And in front here? No. OK, further back in the center there. Um, speaking from the left,